Hey, how you going, YouTube? I thought that I would record my Oscar picks after last night's show that was started off as a complete train wreck, but was all right. But uh, I thought I'd give my picks for my Oscars. So uh, I'm going to start from the bottom and just make my way up. So best adapted screenplay, that doubt goes to Drive. It was based on a book. I haven't read the book, but it seems like it was based off a book. And goddamn, is it amazing. So Drive is the winner of my best adapted screenplay. Uh, best original screenplay, I agree with the winner. Midnight in Paris is a phenomenal film, and it was written amazingly. No doubt about that. Uh, sound editing. Now, I kind of went into my repertoire of what I saw last year and thought, hmm, what could deserve some attention that really was great and had some good sound editing? And I came to Hesher. And that is my pick for Best Sound Editing. And I say that because there's, it's not, you know, the most technically complex movie, and I think Hugo probably won this, and who cares about that? It, this movie could have used the attention, and, like, the sound editing was, like, little metal riffs from, like, Metallica songs, and it... And it really set the mood nicely for the movie. So my pick, uh, Hesher. Explosions and metal riffs. What's not like, what's not to like? So, uh, sound mixing. Dry. The combination of the sounds and of the music. Just beautiful and brilliant. Uh, visual effects. Uh, that was some BS. It should have gone to Harry Potter, but my pick, my win, is Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Rise of the Planet of the Apes should have won that. Best original song. The Muppets. I mean, that's a no-brainer, right? Uh, as far as the short films and foreign, I didn't see any of those, so I'm going to just skip them. Uh, not out of lack of respect, but just because I don't know and I haven't seen any of them. Uh, so moving on, makeup. Harry Potter should have won this. I mean, it's a no-brainer. There's hundreds of people on set that look amazing, and there is no recognition for that film. Harry Potter all the way for best makeup. Uh, best Original Score, this was a nominated, but uh, my pick is Hannah. D Chemical Brothers did an amazing job with the movie. They did such a good job at just keeping the tone set so right on the money. You know, like every, like, it just was so intense, so perfect. Amazing soundtrack, hand all the way. Now, Best Documentary and Best Doc Short, for those two, I didn't see that many documentaries this year, but the one I did see that I really liked was Being Elmo. Being Elmo didn't even get a nomination, and it might have been because it was short, but damn was it good. Very good movie, Being Elmo, Puppeteer's Journey, I think it's called something like that. It's about the guy, Kevin Clash is his name, who is the puppeteer for Elmo and came up with that character. Very interesting stuff. Uh, best editing, uh, I'm going to go with Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, which won. Uh, totally deserving of it. It was brilliantly edited, very well paced, all around, good choice. Good job, Oscars. Art direction. Now, this is the one I am going to agree that Hugo deserved it. Like, the movie looked beautiful. It looked exactly like those old kids' books that you open up with crazy buildings and nice colors. Like, that was art direction for that was brilliant. That could have also gone to Midnight in Paris, which was equally as brilliant. But that was a toss up, and Hugo was just sweeping everything, so I'm not surprised that it won that. Uh, costume design. Um, you know, this was a toughie for me, but I'm going to go with Thor as my winner. But I think that Captain America deserved a nomination, and it was great costumes for both pictures. Um, best Direction, uh, I'm going to go with Drive. Uh, I don't know why it wasn't nominated. It's the best-looking film I saw all year. It looked amazing. Uh, there were shots in there that may... Scorsese crying his sleep, you know, I mean, that's probably not true because Scorsese is a genius, but regardless, Drive, I believe, was the best directed film of the year. Best animated film, I mean, it was Rango, and it won, obviously. I knew the second I saw Rango that it was over, I was like, this is the best thing that's coming out this year. No way Cars 2 is going to get any attention. Now, if Kung Fu Panda 2 would have won, I would have been equally as happy. The movie is brilliant. If you haven't seen Kung Fu Panda 2, get out there and watch it. It's great. Now, Best Cinematography, one of my favorite movies of the year. I'm going to give that to Limitless. Limitless had a style that, the way it was shot, like with this continuous shot and like the way it used saturated colors, like cinematography, brilliant for that. Didn't get any attention from the Oscars. Screw them. That deserved attention. Great cinematography. Winner for that is Limitless. All right, so Best Female Supporting Role, 
You know, I'm going to agree with who won, uh, Octavia Spencer. You know, I didn't see the movie, but I assume that she did a phenomenal job. And, you know, from the way people were reacting, it was probably the right person to give the award to. Regardless, I wish that Ellen Page from Super, one of my favorite movies of the year, would have gotten some attention because she owned being crazy. <laughs> uh, best supporting role, I like who won. You know, Christopher Plummer, he totally deserved it. Oldest guy to win an Oscar, that's pretty awesome. Uh, it would have been cool if Nick Nolte would have won because he would have given a hell of a speech and that would have been the top YouTube clip, to the YouTube clip today. But my pick, Andy Serkis. It's obvious. Andy Serkis as the, what's it called, as the captain in Tintin was alone good enough to be nominated. But his performance as Caesar in Rise of the Planet of the Apes, unmatched by anyone, I think. Uh, actress in the lead, Rooney Mara deserved that award. I don't care what everyone says. I don't care how good she was. Rooney Mara deserved the award. I will say that it would have been a close call between Elizabeth Olsen from Martha Marcy May Marlene. That was a very good performance from Elizabeth Olsen. She didn't get the recognition she deserved. Good job, girlfriend. Uh, <clears throat> and now we get to the best leading actor. My choice for this is Rain Wilson from Super. I think he gave an incredibly powerful performance, and nothing I saw was matched by it. And although the guy from The Artist, he was good. Like, and he gave a fun speech, too. But seriously, he wasn't talking the whole time. So, it's only half a performance, like I said in my review. But, regardless, he was fantastic in that movie. And he deserved the award because no one else in that category deserved it besides him. But my pick is Rain Wilson for that award. And I think that Bradley Cooper could have been in the running for because I thought he gave an amazing performance in Limitless. And I loved him. And now we're down to the final one, the best picture. So, their nominations were kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, wrong? So, here's my list of nominations. Super, Limitless, Drive, The Artist, Hugo, Midnight in Paris, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. So, you'd think the picks, you know, probably go with Drive or The Artist. But my favorite movie from last year is Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Who knew that they could make a drama have such great action and make you care about these characters so much and just get you so invested into them that you would care about this CG monkey running around? You know, that that's brilliant. So that's my pick for the Oscars. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please subscribe right there. I always point there, but it's always right there. Always right there. Then you can write down there, you suck or you're wrong, you know? So tell me. And so, what do you guys think should have won Best Picture? Thanks for watching, guys, and I got more reviews coming your way.